Um, yeah, hi everyone. Um, I, I wanted to start by, you know, um, saying a few words about why climate change, which is obviously the global issue, um, the, like the issue that ex exemplify what a global issue is, is also a very local issue and why it makes sense to, foc to, to focus on, you know, um, responses and alternatives to climate change at the at the local level and not only at the global level and then lay out maybe a few you know perspectives in terms of uh, strategies for local authorities so the the, the first thing is <clears throat> the like the international community's approach to climate change and you know the the like the processes by which the international community has decided to try and tackle the issues um related to climate change uh, date back to at least 19 1992 in Rio and the Earth Summit. That's when the UNFCCC, the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, uh, was agreed on. It has been signed by um, 197 um, parties, member states, um, and um, it has basically one um, ambition, uh, namely to mitigate CO2 emissions. Um, so, so, like more than almost 30 years ago the international community designed a very complex process whose main goal is to mitigate CO2 emissions. This process includes um, the so-called COP, uh, so the UN summits happening every year in a different country. Um, and, and, and if we you know, line up all the meetings and conversations that happen during the COP, it's been basically years and years of people talking and talking and negotiating how to mitigate CO2 emissions. Yet over the last 30 years, um, CO2 emissions have exploded. They've actually risen by more than 75%. Um, um, at no time in history have CO2 emissions increased as much uh, as they have over the last 30 years. Obviously, it doesn't mean that you know, the, 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 the main reason why they've increased is because of the COP process, right? That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. But, but the reality is that the process that was designed to mitigate CO2 emission has failed uh, to help uh, the international community agree on a real process to mitigate them, uh, not to mention the implementation. Um, it's, not, it's not a failure of the process per se, obviously. Um, actually, the space was uh, designed very interestingly, right? Um, there is this idea that not all parties, not all states have the same responsibility uh, when it comes to climate change. And there is also the idea, so there is the idea, you know, that the historic polluters um, have a responsibility that is stronger and more important than states that have um, little to no responsibility in climate change, yet are very often the states that are on the front line of the consequences of climate change. And, and the other very interesting thing in this process is that um, it's, Decisions are supposed to be made by consensus. One state equals one voice. Um, so the U.S. cannot officially come and tell, you know, to Pacific Island or to Bangladesh, no, you're not going to say that because we disagree. Officially, one state equals one one word, um, one one voice. Um, that that doesn't work, obviously, like that. That's that's a principle. That's a theory. But the space was designed as such. It's not, it's not working because of the role of the fossil fuel industry. It's not working because of the collusions between political leaders and the fossil fuel industry. It's not working because, um, well, world leaders have failed us. But, but it's also important to acknowledge that, I mean, you know, would, would this process be about anything else uh, and have failed to deliver what it's supposed to deliver? We would also, you know, try to change the process and see other ways or other, other approaches to uh, the issues we are trying to, to solve. And part of the problem might actually be um, the way we are framing the issue. The problem is that um, we are very often framing the issue of climate change as a global problem only, including ourselves, social movements, right? We're, build, we're somehow building it from the top. We have conversations about climate change that are not necessarily rooted in territories. We have very abstract approaches to what climate change is about and to the solutions of climate change. Um, and, and so it definitely is important, I think, for everyone, including social movements and local authorities, to explore the power of um, answers that happen at the local scale, at the local level, um, for, for several reasons. The, the first reason is, I think, the, the local level is actually one of the main spaces 
where we can actually show how alternatives are connected, how they form a system. Because if we if we are you know only thinking at the at the global level, um, then you know whenever a local authority will, for instance, decide that there will be less meal, uh, less meat, sorry, um, at lunch at school, then we will say, well, okay, it's interesting, it's important, but it's not at the scale of the problem. However, it is actually at the scale of the problem for local authorities to approach the, the answers to climate change, just like this. The, the, the other reason why it is important to um, approach it from the local level is to you know, regain some trust um, in, in, in the flourishing alternatives that we are witnessing, that we are involved in, that we are you know, nurturing. Um, and I, I remember, and well, actually some people on this call like um, Vladimir and Sergio were involved uh, in that dynamics as well, but like 20 years ago, uh, when we were attending the World Social Forum, we were, you know, like, it was the explosion of alternatives. You, you, you were attending the World Social Forum in Porto Alegre and meeting somebody and they will talk to you about one idea that they had and then you would go to a workshop and it would be about another alternative and then you would go to, go to a plenary session and you would discuss something very different. And, like, it was flourishing. There were ideas all over the place. You know, people trying something new and then people trying something else and people trying something different. And back then, 20 years ago, like it was really acknowledged that this, the multiplication of alternatives was actually the main strength of the movement. We were strong because there were so many alternatives. And so we were strong because we were resilient because we were multiplying the fronts. And, and now it seems that we are in, in the opposite state of mind. Whenever you know, somebody mentions the fact that, you know, there are many alternatives to climate change. There will somebody come and say, yeah, but they're not forming a system. Your weakness is the fact that you have you know, very separated alternatives, but they're not forming the system. And, 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 and the place, the space where we can try and address that and challenge that narrative that alternatives do not form the system is a local level. The, 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 the other reason why, um, Related to that, or another way to look at this and, and to explain why alternatives matter at the local level is um, it's because, because alternatives are precisely not a matter of solutions, but a matter of scales. Whenever we're talking about alternatives, we are actually not talking about, you know, what technology could replace fossil fuel to power, um, um, power my house, um, what, you know, what technology could uh, power my car instead of uh, fossil fuels or, you know, should I use a train and how should the train be powered? No. Alternatives are actually about scales. It's a matter of scales. It's how can we reclaim power over the territories we're working in. Alternatives are actually the way we manage to project time. And in the case of climate change, it's very long times so or thousands of years of the impact of, you know, the combustion of fossil fuels have on climate. How we manage to project time onto space. Because if we're only remaining at the level of time and the you know, incredibly long-term consequences of climate change, then we have no power over anything. No one here, um, and even you know, us all together and millions of us assembled, will have enough power to change something that will happen or that will have consequences up until a thousand years. But if we are managing to translate or to project time onto space, then we can reclaim that power. And that's where local, local scales, local authorities, local level are so important. It's also important because, yes, we are facing one of the biggest, one of the most complex issues uh, we've ever faced. We are prob probably facing what is, you know, um, the existential crisis of our time and probably, you know, the most important issue humanity has ever faced. But, but, but the fact that this crisis and this catastrophe um, is, is bigger and stronger and, and, and more worrying than any other, doesn't mean that we should, shouldn't move step by step, one foot after the other, right? Change has to begin. Change has to begin somewhere. And that somewhere is very often, comes, comes very often down to uh, local scales, local places, territories where we live our day-to-day -day lives. Um, and, and, and so I think, you know, the, basically working at the local level to try and tackle climate change probably means to try and articulate two poles. One, the first pole is the resistance. The second pole are the alternatives. So the resistance means basically uh, first blocking everything that is destroying the world. 
the climate, our ecosystem, our territories. So it's it's really you know like stopping the destruction of what's happening, and 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 that's very interesting as well because blocking those processes very often happens on the ground, right? When it comes to block the project of an airport, it's not you know in an international negotiation or international summit that this will happen. It is on the very field where the airport is going to be built that um, this can this can happen. Uh, you know the reason why. Um, in the U.S., Keystone XL wasn't built, or the reason why um, you know Germany might eventually phase out of coal earlier than uh, initially scheduled is not because of international negotiations. It's because people have taken the fields to block those infrastructures. So this happened very locally. The 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 other part of the resistance is um, non-cooperation. All the attempts by which we say individually and collectively, not in our name, not your, with our money. So this is, you know, every attempt um, that that we do at divesting, divesting, sorry, money uh, from the fossil fuel industry or from the activities that are destroying the planet, are are, are belonging to um, to this approach. And there again, local authorities do have a lot of power, right? Because lo local authorities can clearly say, well, actually, we do represent, you know, if it's a, like. If it's a big city, potentially up to several millions of inhabitants, and we were elected on a platform that is very clear about climate change, and that platform does include that we are not going to invest our pension fund, that we are not go going to invest the money, um, you know, that we're raising through, through taxes and so on and so forth, that we are not going to invest that money in the fossil fuel industry. And so you can, you know, if you add up all the local authorities that have made a commitment to divest from fossil fuels, actually we come up to like a representation of several, like of hundreds of millions of people that are represented by local authorities that li who live in local local authorities that have decided to divest from fossil fuel. So, so that, that that's a real power also at the local level level to cease to cooperate to you know refuse to be part of the destruction uh, of the climate and the environment. And then the the, the alternatives are about um, two things as well. The first one is you know as I said every we like trying to support and nurture all these attempts to um, behave differently with the planet, with other species, species, with you know territories, and like the relocalization of the production, um, like alternative low-tech alternatives to uh, the high-tech technologies that are being designed at the global level, and then the other pole is the importance of caring for one another, and that happens at the community level, right? We care, we care because we belong, and we belong where we live. So, so I think it's, it's, it's really important indeed to try and maybe, you know, deglobalize uh, our relation to climate change, deglobalize the way we frame the issue of climate change, uh, and try to, you know, also deglobalize um, our movement, not giving up on solidarity, but shifting from transnational forms of solidarity to translocal forms of solidarity where we would, you know, unite and work together um, from the territories um, we're involved in, from the places where we live, rather than in a very deterritorialized approach. Thanks.